And tonight's Crime Watch, police need your help in finding a man suspected of murder. According to Captain Lloyd Baker with the Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit, it happened yesterday morning on the 2700 block of 37th Street in Northport. Baker says the victim, 22-year-old Victor Rosas and 30-year-old suspect Oscar Moran Rivera, went to the store and upon arrival back to the victim's apartment, witnesses stated they saw Rosas enter the apartment bleeding from the neck. Rosas was later found dead. According to Baker, Rivera tried to escape with a female relative of the victim and was last seen in St. Clair County. He was last seen in the victim's 2001 blue Toyota Celica, tag number 63G36S1. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Oscar Moran Rivera, please call the Northport Police Department at 205-339-6600 or the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office at 205-464-8672. Well, slippery roads are the cause of a fatal accident that took the life of an eight-year-old in Bibb County, according to Corporal Steve Smith of the Alabama State Troopers. Smith says the accident occurred yesterday afternoon on Alabama Highway 5, just outside of Brent. According to Smith, an SUV traveling southbound hit standing water and caused the driver to lose control, spinning into the other lane, hitting another vehicle head on. Smith says eight-year-old Jessica Huey from Marion was transported to DCH in Tuscaloosa and was later pronounced dead. Alabama State Troopers are continuing to investigate the accident. According to Trooper John Reese with the Alabama State Troopers Department, Clinton Michael Gillespie of Coling lost his life when a vehicle struck a building on Alabama 25 early this morning. Reese says Gillespie's vehicle took a curve too fast before it left the roadway. Alabama State Troopers continue to investigate that crash as well. And according to Trooper Reese, the lack of wearing a seatbelt is the cause of death to a York teen that was involved in a single vehicle wreck Saturday afternoon. Reese says the preliminary investigation shows 17-year-old Edric Jones was traveling over the speed limit and lost control. According to Reese Jones, Reese Jones was ejected from his vehicle and was pronounced dead on the scene. Alabama State Troopers are still investigating that accident. From the first professional boxing match just a few weeks ago to this weekend's Golden Glove Tournament, the state of Alabama is creating momentum for the sport of boxing. Victoria Sheehan takes us to Brookwood where a new trend is coming ringside just in time for the excitement of an Olympic qualifying year. Four years ago, Deontay Wilder took the ring in the Alabama Golden Gloves Tournament, setting the stage to go on and win Olympic bronze a year later. I think Deontay Wilder set the tone four years ago. He was the only uh, medalist in the sport of boxing at the entire Beijing Olympics. So out of the entire United States, 300 million plus people, there's only one medalist and he's from Alabama. And once you have pro athletes, for the younger athletes to look up, like, like this kid, to look up to, then uh, he looks up to Deontay a lot, you know. Uh, so when you have you have somebody like that, then yeah, it'll it'll boost the sport in the state. But boosting the sport in Alabama is not a question of skill. We obviously have the athletic base, you know, just you know, turn it into the special. Just don't have the history here in Alabama, you know, but we're gonna create a history. That history is starting now with a younger talent base. Each year, the Alabama Golden Gloves Tournament brings the best state fighters together, and everyone is noticing more kids stepping into the ring. It takes so much discipline uh, for these kids, and if they don't do what they're supposed to do, they don't get to compete. It's good for the kids, you know, to um, they keep the kids busy, keep them something to do. Boxing is a great thing. I mean, as far as the kid, they can look forward to turning pro and, and, and becoming the next big thing. Now in West Alabama, novice fists are hoping to charge the potential of future fighters in the state and one day continue what Deontay Wilder has started. Advice I have for the kids, um, if you're going to get in boxing, make sure this is what you want to do first of all, you know, uh, and um, just come with a big heart, come dedicated, um, and um, with that, you know, just always believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to believe in Only you can take you as far as you allow yourself to, and, uh, and just come, and, and, and just most of all, just have fun. Reporting in Brooklyn, Victoria Sheehan, WVA News. Experts say statistically there are less injuries in children that box than children who play football. Well, Plum Grove Baptist Church joined together for a groundbreaking ceremony today to celebrate the future site of their new activity center. Local residents came to support the church's plan to open the community developmental center, which will be located right behind the church. The center will allow residents to participate in a variety of activities, including tutoring for kids and recreational sports. Through the center, the church hopes to reach out to the community and impact lives in a positive way. We spoke with Plum Grove Baptist Church Pastor Tyson Gardner, who told us how he thinks the activity center will affect the community. 
I think it's going to have a tremendous impact on this community. Uh, people are going to have a safe place to learn, to play, to have recreation, to have programs that are vital and essential to life and having a high quality of life. And so uh, it's much needed in this side of the a town, a community, and I believe it's going to be a, a place that's very nice and going to have a profound impact upon everybody who enters its doors. Reverend Tyshawn Gardner told us the Activity Center is estimated to open in September 2011.